Plague beckons. Hello again, and welcome back to Storm Talk. Today we're going to be taking a look at Zeratul, the Dark Prelate. You can take a moment to read his backstory. We'll take a moment to play his character model. Okay, on his traits, his primary trait is his permanent cloak. Very similar to Nova, he's permanently invisible and becomes invisible when he hasn't attacked or taken damage any time of sleep. His basic, basic abilities are cleave. Nearby, uh, damages nearby enemies for 40 mana, 6 seconds of cooldown. Singularity Spike, 60 mana, 12 seconds of cooldown. Slows and damages enemies and hits. And blink. Teleport to a target I location. will be your blade from the shadows. Uh, the ability does not break close. His heroic abilities are Shadow Assault. Uh, basic attacks charge enemies, have life steal, and you attack faster, or void prison. Track all targets, making them become invulnerable. His skins, the Shadow Free Lake, and variations. Master Skin, and High Templar, with variations, and Roman, with variations. I think I'm going to go with just standard skin, because Zeratul's a good friend of mine when I used to play StarCraft. I used to love playing with this guy. I will be your blade from the shadows. So, I, I think I'm just going to stick to the normal nymph. Taking up the normal pretense. We must not hesitate. As you can see, he's invisible. He got some blue glow. Of course, that's it. So, his invisibility is a two-second cooldown. Taking damage, channeling, or attacking will kill you. I serve as El Naga. So, his E. Simple. Shadow Spike, Skill Shot, or sorry, Singularity Spike. The skill Shot You fling the Spike at 6 to an enemy and deals 120 damage after 1 second, and slows them by 40%. You'll see this baseball from on because if you notice, the distance it travels is very close to the distance he can blink. So if he's chasing down somebody, he'll hit them with it, and then blink towards them. So, yeah. Um, I see that a lot as a, it's going to hit you and take you down. And then cleave. It's big, like... On maps such as uh, Soul Golem, their tool is amazing, especially once he gets a couple of levels on him, because he can just walk down and cleave and take out the entire camp. Anyway, I'm going to demonstrate him a little bit in combat. He starts with 820 HP with a 1.71 regeneration. 
500 mana with a 3-point regeneration, uh, an attack range of 1.5, an attack speed of 1.11, and damage of 47. As we level up... Choose a talent. Choose a talent. At level 30, we have 4,735 HP with a 9.86 regeneration, 790 mana with a 5.83 standard, and his damage is now 424, one of the largest in the Okay, now let's take a look at his at level 1, we have Block and Cleave. Uh, block, generalized talent. Cleave increases the radius of Cleave by 33%. He also gains Rapid Displacement, which reduces the cooldown of Glint by 1.5 seconds. And Master of Regeneration and Season Arcane. Now, on the map, depend on which one you want to uh, Greater Cleave is amazing in a uh, map where you have to take out things such as the Skull Golem, as it allows you to reach the entire camp. However, at the same time, Seasoned Barksmen in those exact same camps will get you, let's see, I believe the Skull Golem camps come with four to five skeletons per pack, and there are ten packs. No. So, like six packs with they drop two balls of these, whatever. I'm not doing that math. Um, yeah, you can literally farm your season marksman down there without too much of a problem. Um, so early on, great cleave is great. Uh, rapid displacement is nice, but it's not that good. If you're jumping over walls, I'd probably take it on the coin map, but that's about it. Season marksman. Is pretty much your go-to if you are past level one. Choose a talent. At level four, you get Focus Attack, Vampiric Assault, Greater Power, Sustained Anomaly, and Warped Blade. Greater Power is a general talent. Um, yeah. Warped Blade, you activate to teleport to the last non-structure target you attack within three seconds. Take a second to think that in. It allows you to teleport to somebody who's, tri who's teleported over a wall to get away from you. Uh, sustained anomaly, singularity spike, explodes for uh, area damage. The singularity spike explodes for area damage and slows regardless of whether it hits the target or not. This is a nice thing because it turns your skill shot into a skill top, and just makes it a little easier to hit if you have the limited. Um, if you've gotten used to throwing out Singularity Spike, you're going to take Global Blade and resign. I personally take Vampiric Assault because I already have a blink and I don't usually blink into combat, so. It's really Vampiric Assault for health, or Global Blade for we're going to go Vampiric Assault. Choose a talent. Now, at level 7, you have Follow Through. Generalized talent, First Aid, and Searing Attacks, both also generalized talent. You also have Vending Cleave. The Cleave deals an additional 50% damage over 5 seconds. And Shadow Spike. No longer decloaks after using Singularity Spike, and its range is increased by 20%. Everybody takes this one. Everybody. Um, it allows you to shoot out your Singularity Spike without decloaking. Um, if you took the Sustained Anomaly, it makes an explosion. And that's 700 damage level 30. It's not, it's not a lot. It's not well nothing, uh, sneeze that. We're going to take Rending Cleave, though, as our 1-2. Shadow Assault. 
Your basic attacks cause you to charge at enemies and have a 20% attack that lasts for 6 seconds. Demonstrate that. If you remember, we've taken the cleave bonuses, so... I serve the actually do a lot of, like, oh, you got plus 20% attack speed. You're going to use it as a buff to get into the fight faster, like, slightly, and then you're going to use it as the buff to mess people up. 20% attack speed is more than worth it. Kind of a lame ultimate, but it is one of those, like, oh, well, 20% attack speed is literally 20% more damage if you keep hitting. And it gives you the ability to charge, which allows you to keep Anyway, at level 13, we have Giant's Killer, General Talent, Burning Rage, General Talent, and Spell Shield, General Talent. You also gain access to Assassin's Blade. You gain 25% uh, damage for 5 seconds when breaking cloak, and you gain 10% movement speed well cloaked, or Wormhole. Uh, after blinking, you can cast Blink again to return to your original position. If you're doing a lot of diving, such as, say, if you're going after murky eggs that are just behind the enemy wall, wormhole's not bad. Honestly, though, Assassin's Blade is an amazing trait. It gives you movement speed, it gives you attack damage. It's great. However, in this case, because of the role you play as an invisible assassin who carries a sword, Giant Killer is what you're taking most of the time. It kind of falls into a very niche wormhole, or do you need to move around faster as Assassin's Blade? If you do not need to move that fast, and you're not jumping back and forth between walls, you take Giant Killer. Choose a talent. At level 16, you have the Berserk, Stone Skin, and Executioner uh, general talents. You also have Singularity Bomb, or a Double Bomb. After casting Singularity Spike, you can cast it again for free within 3 seconds. And Void Splash. Cleave deals 30% damage if used while close. We're going to take this because we already have a few other Cleave things. Choose a talent. At level 20, you have Fury of the Storm, Bolt of the Storm, and... Nerezeum Fury. Shadow Assault grants 30% life still, and its increase, duration is increased by 50%. So, let's demonstrate. So, first thing we're going to do is use our Void Slash. Jump in. One thing, since towers do not attack you, if you take um, the Void Slash, one thing you can just do, wait two seconds, or actually wait six seconds. Probably should have waited a couple more seconds. But you cloak, you walk in with cleave.
destroys buildings. Don't take damage. Like seriously, it it it, it it's not bad. Same time. Shadow Assault, since it grants 30% life. Do remember, I did take Vampiric Assault for that additional 15% life skill. So. I will fulfill anyway, my And. Let's bump up. Now, this time, we're going to be playing as if we have an everything unlocked. Um, I normally talent. go for Season Marksman, but as I said, have the time to form it during the this in introduction little training phase. We're gonna go with rapid displacement just to show it off a little bit. Okay. We're gonna go with sustained anomaly. It yeah, just plan this up, we'll take sustained anomaly. Choose a talent. Shadow spite. Void prison. Trap all targets for five seconds, making them invulnerable. You are not affected by this effect. Now, to demonstrate this a little bit, I serve the Zelnaga. Toggle minions. Anyone who touches it, anyone, become locked down. works against enemy buildings. Drop it on one tower so I can take out the Okay, now continuing. We have the double portal or the assassin blade. We're gonna take assassin blade. Actually let's take wormhole. And double boss. Now Here's the interesting thing. At level 20, Fury of the Storm, blah blah blah. You also get protective prisons. Allies are no longer affected by your void prison. Thing is, if allies are no longer affected by your void prison, locking them down stops happening. Same time as you saw there. It 
does have a couple of good things with it. It really depends on the map you're in. So. Now let's actually do a build. Shadow Spike, Shadow Assault, I'm gonna take one pull again. because I did, I forgot to demonstrate it, but Shadow uh, Assassin's Blade or Giant Killer would probably be a better choice. Choose a talent. And then we're going to take Double Bomb. So, to demonstrate. Yes. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. That was really horrible. Fire will be restored. Remember that Run away a little bit. 
cloak. So, this was my storm talk on Zeratul. I hope it was informative and enjoyable. Have a nice day.